Hi, my name is Tom Tykerow. I live at uh, Langaruth, Manitoba with my wife Michelle and our two children, Madison and Regan. Uh, we moved here in 2001 and uh, we've uh, lived here ever since at uh, Langaruth, uh, five miles east of Langaruth actually, uh, just a mile and a half off Lake Manitoba and uh, we run about uh, 300 head of cattle. We have uh, successfully uh, implemented uh, um, more sustainable, uh, what we feel are more sustainable methods in running our operation using bale grazing as uh, one of those methods. We've uh, been doing this now for about eight years. We've, uh, we can honestly say it's a method we'll probably, as long as we're in the industry, we'll probably uh, keep expanding on it. We've been very, very successful and uh, it's improved our, uh, our bottom line economically in, 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 a, in a fairly substantial way. Um, again, just a little bit about our operation. We, we, have deci we decided uh, in, uh, in 2006 that we were going to add holistic management to one of our tools uh, to basically get a more three-dimensional view of how we run our operation. Um, as uh, I often say to other uh, people in the industry that we don't have enough people that uh, I believe are, are three-dimensional thinking people and I think that this is uh, holistic management is one of those tools that really pushes you in that direction. Um, it allows you, allows you to uh, view and visualize your ranch and your family and the world around you um, as a uh, just one continuous picture in a revolving uh, world if you will and we have to manage those tools to try and find ways to put our farms that when our children inherit them from us that uh, that they're there and will be there for a long time. One of those tools uh, of course that we've implemented for a long time is using natural shelters, uh, natural shelter belters that were provided by Mother Nature and we haven't, uh, we've had the privilege of using those and expanding those through various fencing, um, just simple fencing, hot, uh, hot wire fencing to uh, enable us to move cattle into uh, parts that are heavily bushed and equally retain them from areas where we want to uh, make sure that we don't lose uh, those prime natural shelter belts. We have also put in water lines to be able to make sure that we can keep cattle in areas um, that we were never did before, uh, areas where the bush is extremely, extremely thick and the shelter belts are more than just shelter belts. Uh, um, so we can put the cattle in there to, to help uh, thin them out a little bit. Um, to up to a point when we think that it's enough and then we're going to simply move them into another area. Uh, bale grazing uh, is something that uh, we have used now for, like I said, uh, roughly about uh, eight years. Uh, we have had probably more return on that now than, than I could possibly measure when we talk about the biological um, improvements that we've made. Um, of course, the uh, flood of 2011 made a bit of an impact to uh, where the grass diversity was and the plant diversity in, in our pasture. But uh, we also know that with the fact that we have those tools available to us now and that, we, that we've uh, used them very successfully, that we're going to be able to use them again here to improve the pasture once again to where we had them. Uh, not only do we see the biological diversity and number of uh, a great deal of uh, healthy plants and much healthier plants and and much more denser growth but we've also been able to imp, uh, increase our our uh, capacity for in our operation in terms of our overall numbers uh, we started uh, with the same land base in uh, 2011 as we did now except for our hay acres we've probably increased our cow numbers from uh, 220 to about 320 uh, with the same land base uh, would have not been possible without uh, using the uh, tight uh, methods that we have for managing our, our resources here. And that for us is very, very key. And again, it's got to, it has to, for us, it has to meet our goal where it has to meet our family goal of first of all making sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're happy in this environment. And number two, it, it has economic benefit. And, and thirdly, that uh, we are improving our biological uh, assets on, on a daily or at least on an annual base 
and uh, we feel we've accomplished that. Um, bale grazing for us, like I said, has worked very successfully. There are key times in the year where I feel we have to move away from it a little bit. For example, uh, in April, early late March and early April, when you have bale set out, you'll in years of heavy snow like we've had in 2013, there's big drifts around those bales. Uh, on warm days, cattle will have a tendency to uh, to fill up uh, and then lay down, and they melt in and we've lost a number of animals that way and so you have to be very careful that way the cows don't get over the side typically in april we uh, the, the, our calving operation is uh, very close to calving we typically start calving about the 15th of april so when those cows go on their side they're very heavy and very unless you're right there you can't be able to get them up so that's one drawback you do have to pull them from that on a day where you do have lots of rain um, you have to be able to uh, give them limited access and if you have a week of uh, very wet weather as we can in the springtime you have to have various uh, different areas where you have feed available to you so they're not in the bale grazing areas because you do end up especially years like this year where feed is very very expensive and it's not necessarily the feed goes to waste because it eventually just goes into your land but you may not have enough feed and so you have to make sure that you don't I guess waste your feed and so that's one of the another one of those drawbacks um, I guess my my final uh, my final note would be on on you know shelter belts uh, bale grazing and managing your land uh, the overall perspective is that you like I said in the beginning you really have to have a three-dimensional view of where you need your operation to go uh, how you how you get there and how you achieve that is going to be an individual. We're very blessed with natural shelter, so we don't have to, you know, we don't have to have the exp the extra costs of implementing, uh, you know, shelter belts and and uh, and uh, shelters otherwise to be able to uh, do what we do in the winter time. There are certain areas where we do have uh, where we do have uh, temporary uh, uh, portable shelters that uh, that we use as well, and uh, we certainly have been able to utilize some of them. But at the in, in overall, uh, as far as my perspective is, is that we have to, we have to again continue with the process that we started here. And for all of you that uh, are thinking that uh, you want to improve your land and improve your your bottom line, this is a great tool and a great way to get. Started. Uh, just in front of us here, there's a fence line, and the water is all on this side here, and that that uh, bush in front of us here, the tree line, the natural tree line, is going to be fenced off and the cows will have no access to that at all. And so we're protected from the northwest uh, at all times. And over here is a uh, maternity pen for if we do end up needing it. So the cows uh, will be in the pasture at all times. And uh, next year we can move that mat pen to a different area. The security of the shelter here and uh, being able to uh, make sure it doesn't uh, get any thinner from what it is now. now. represents an area here that has six paddocks around us. There's a water trough and we just have a couple of minor fences to put in and then all those areas can be have access to this water trough and one of the indicators that we use here for allowing the cows into our shelter belts is to make sure you have a good look at, at the little trees, uh, the smaller trees that come into. You can tell this area that we're looking at right now hasn't had very high activity. There's a lot of young uh, suckers and a lot of young trees in here, even young oak trees. So this is an area that we can uh, concentrate on a little bit over the next couple, three, four years and uh, just make sure we uh, keep it just uh, back just far enough so that uh, we can utilize it for grass and shelter.